Well, modern electronics use a number of rare earth minerals like cobalt found in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where activists say mining is dangerous work, often dug by hand for low wages. But as viewer Jeffrey Young reports, the high-tech industry has launched an initiative to improve these mining conditions. They're considered essential these days. Mobile phones, tablets, computers. And with technology always advancing, manufacturers demand raw materials in a never-ending stream. These electronics, especially their batteries, depend on rare earth minerals such as tantalium and cobalt. A significant amount of these minerals come from the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC, especially in the southern region that used to be called Katanga, where the major city is Lomambashi. Those who toil in these so-called artisanal mines, hand digging, washing, sorting and hauling what they find, end the day with the equivalent of only a few dollars. And some of those working in the mines are young children. The number of school children toiling in the mines is large, according to Amnesty International researcher Mark Drummond. United Nations, which is based in the DRC, says that there are at least 40,000 children uh, working in these artisanal mines in the southern part of the country. How many are working on cobalt as opposed to other minerals, we don't know, but it's clearly a very large problem. Drummond says poverty compels families to send their children to work in mines and not to school. He adds that the problem is made worse because of school fees in the DRC that some parents cannot afford. The DRC has laws and follows treaties banning the use of child labor, but enforcement is weak, according to a representative of African Resources Watch in Lumumbashi, speaking to VOA via Skype, Richard Ilunga Mokina. Unfortunately, this legislation are not applied here in Congo. That's the, uh, the main problem we are here, is to apply uh, legislations uh, about protecting uh, the children who's working in uh, mining seats. In hand-dug artisanal mine pits, workers go sideways into the earth as well as straight down. And sometimes collapses take place, burying miners alive. And that's not the only deadly hazard they face, says Amnesty's Mark Drummond. And the miners also don't have protective equipment. For example, um, uh, inhaling cobalt dust can be extremely dangerous. It can cause a fatal lung disease called, called hard metal lung disease. In the face of mounting criticism, a Chinese business group, along with Apple, HP, Samsung, and Sony, launched last December the Responsible Cobalt Initiative. The goal is to get manufacturers to obtain their cobalt from reputable sources, not from dangerous mines. And last November, the Electronic Industry Citizenship Council launched its own initiative to stop trading rare minerals with militias that use mining for revenues. Compliance will take time. Meanwhile, from dawn to sunset in southern DRC, shovels continue to turn in the deep earth. Jeffrey Young, VOA News. Now to South Africa where representatives of the Nigerian government have been meeting with authorities and members of the Nigerian community to stop xenophobic attacks on foreign nationals in the country. One solution may be a new call center. Channel Television's Joe Berg Bureau Chief Betty Dibia reports. It was as vibrant as a typical Nigerian gathering, sometimes emotional, sometimes nice and others not so nice. Our government is weak. Yes. Our government do not protect us. They, you don't protect us. You have come and have teas and dinners and the lunch with them and they, they massage you and they are going back. I promise you this problem is going to continue. We have not come here on a holiday. We've come here for a purpose and you are that purpose. And it will break our hearts if we have to suffer any insult from you. It could be a win-win, you know, if we engage. There was room for most to speak, and the ministers gave assurances. Dialogue is the best option, and this is what we are adopting. Uh, very much our priority, and we are not going to let go until we see that you are here living in security, your property, your lives, and your profession. Thank you. 
One of those present at the gathering was the wife of jailed Henry Oka Azuka, who spoke privately to the Foreign Affairs Minister. I wanted him to be aware that uh, my husband had been assaulted twice in prison and I went to visit him on the 26th of February and he was just like a mess skeleton. So I want to make sure that he's alive. He's a Nigerian. So, you know, the government has an obligation to protect and defend Nigerians wherever they are. So clearly, uh, as a Nigerian, we will be extremely concerned um, uh, any maltreatment he might um, suffer. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also told us that a call centre is in the offing for Nigerians abroad to reach his ministry more directly with issues bothering them. 24-7 call centre for Nigerians anywhere in the world so that uh, Nigerians can call that number and, um, and inform uh, us of any challenges they're facing anywhere in the world and um, the, uh, the government will then be seized of that matter uh, immediately. The ministers have returned to Nigeria this Wednesday, but some Nigerian legislators are still in South Africa on the xenophobia issue. And many Nigerians are quite pleased at this intervention. It will you know, make a great impact in the sense that the government of South Africa will now see that we have representatives of our government you know, in the country to see to it that the problem we are facing here as Nigerians are taken care of. The hope, however, is that all the assurances given will be followed up to avoid returning to the same spot again. From Pretoria, South Africa, Betsy Divia, Channel Television News. Well, African migrants heading to Europe via the Mediterranean Sea are prey to abuse while traveling through the Sahara Desert and Libya. Now, migration officials say there is a new campaign to inform would-be migrants about the dangers they face. While well, the Aware Migrants campaign, which was launched last year by the Italian government and the International Organization for Migration, features video testimonies of migrants who made it to Europe but were abused, bitten and raped. The campaign is targeting potential migrants across West and Central Africa with posts of fa on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and Instagram and adverts on the local media. It's time now for a short break, but before we go, a reminder to visit our website, it's channelstv.com, for all the latest information around the clock. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channels web. And still to come, an economic downturn does little to dampen the spirits of Angolans when it comes to celebrating carnival. Well, that comes up in a moment.